Good afternoon and welcome to Lariat TV News Today. I'm Julia Loren. And I'm Kennedy Dendy. Thanks for joining us today. Baylor unveils a new brand identity as part of its Baylor United rebranding effort on Monday. The full reveal comes after a partial reveal of new athletic branding Saturday before the spring football game. I sat down with a few experts on this new branding, which they described as a one brand approach. Out with the old and in with the new. Baylor has created a rebranding effort called Baylor United. This effort is unifying Baylor through academics and athletics with a new graphic identity. President Livingstone shared the news in an email sent out Monday morning. Jason Cook, Vice President for Marketing and Communications and Chief Marketing Officer, shared what this rebranding means and entails for the future. We're becoming united across our campus to use a consistent marks and colors and the idea of uh, using one graphic identity to represent Baylor uh, is, uh, is incredibly important. Baylor United has changed a few things about the way Baylor brand looks. The first part of the rebranding effort is the Pat Neff logo. This will no longer be the official logo of Baylor. It will be phased out and replaced with iconic interlocking BU. So we did a lot of brand research of what has happened in the past. And if you look that that iconic interlocking BU dates back over 100 years on our campus. The integrity of the BU mark, the interlocking BU mark, is the same. We've made some minor revisions uh, to the mark, to a little bit of modernization uh, to the interlocking BU, but the mark, in essence, the integrity of the mark is still there. In addition to this brand change, Baylor has said goodbye to the current Baylor Bear and has created a new graphic to fit the Baylor United theme. Uh, we did uh, unveil a new bear, uh, and what we found is our current bear is, uh, is not very beloved. Uh, the new bear is, uh, is quite fierce. Uh, he represents the passion that we have here at Baylor. There have been other small marketing changes which include official green and gold Baylor colors that will be used university-wide. The Baylor fonts have also been changed to lowercase for legibility and functionality. For Lariat TV News, I'm Julia Lorenz. Millions of people from around the world watched in horror on Monday as the Notre Dame's Cathedral in Paris, France went up in flames. The cause of the fire is still unknown. Baylor's campus reacted as students who had seen the beloved 12th century cathedral felt lucky to have visited it before the tragic fire. Students who plan to visit Paris in the summer are shocked by the news and deeply saddened. The fire was first reported in the attic and ultimately destroyed Notre Dame's nearly 900-year-old roof and spire. Hundreds of firefighters worked to put out the flames and save priceless relics and treasures. Just days after the fire, nearly a billion dollars in donations have been pledged to fund renovations. President of France Emmanuel Macron has vowed to rebuild Notre Dame's damaged portions within five years. Baylor's semi-annual Steppin' Out event takes place once a semester and offers students the chance to give back to their local community. LTVN's Emma Witt witnessed a few ways Baylor students volunteered this spring and even got a chance to help out. There are many traditions at Baylor, from sing to homecoming to Dia de Loso, but none quite so selfless as Stepping Out, a day of service where Baylor students dedicate themselves to volunteer work for their community. Students from various organizations were found all around Waco this past Saturday, taking advantage of the opportunity to serve. Co-director for Planning and Logistics, Meg Taylor, elaborates on what a success this semester's Stepping Out really was. We had uh, 2350 approximately volunteers sign up this semester. We also started um, the first ever athletics site. Um, so we had Baylor Athletics actually participate with us and do a site. Unfortunately, there was a catch this semester. On the day of stepping out, a massive storm hit and prevented many aspects of the event from going according to plan. But Baylor's stepping out team persevered and have organized a makeup stepping out day. We pulled together called our sites, gave them a solution, and yeah, you'll see us out again in the community on April 26th and 27th. Baylor sophomore Ashton Smith was one of the many students who participated in the event and explains what prompted her to sign up. I love serving people, and but since my schedule has been so busy this semester, I wasn't able to go to like Habitat for Humanity, so I feel like this was a very easy way to sign up with my organization. Smith also describes what the experience came to mean to her. Stepping Out made me feel like I made a difference in the community, even though I did something so small like cleaning. I feel like since that was such a behind-the-scenes job, it still mattered. 
For Lariat TV News, I'm Emma Witt. New leadership is on the horizon for Baylor's Honors College. It recently appointed Dr. Douglas V. Henry as interim dean, and he will begin his work July 1st. Henry is succeeding Dr. Thomas Hibbs, who is moving on to become the president of the University of Dallas. Hibbs, who is a University of Dallas alumnus, has been the dean of the Honors College at Baylor since 2003. Henry gradu graduated with a BA in religion from Oklahoma Baptist University and went on to receive his MA and PhD from Vanderbilt University. According to the Honors College website, the Honors College will begin searching for a new dean following the arrival of Baylor's new provost, Dr. Nancy Brickhouse, in May. Virtual reality is making its way into education. Last week, Armstrong Browning Library celebrated their annual Browning Day with a presentation by Amanda Gardner, who is a PhD student in education. LTVN's Grace Smith was at Browning Day to find out what this virtual reality technology is really about. Armstrong Browning Library is located on Baylor's campus and is dedicated to the Victorian poets Robert and Elizabeth Barrett Browning. The library is known for holding the world's largest collection of Browning's works and the largest collection of stained glass. Each year, the library celebrates the Brownings with either a lecture or a musical concert. This annual tradition is called Browning Day. This year, Amanda Gardner, who is a Baylor PhD student in education, discovers that virtual reality technology can take students to another level of understanding. Gardner said that by standing in Emily Dickinson's bedroom, she realized how much of a better understanding she had of Emily's work than just studying it and reading it. First time ever I got to stand in her bedroom, and at that moment I knew that every instinct I had about her was right. It was the place, it was the location, and to be able to do that for students. The only way to experience this virtual reality world is putting on VR goggles. The goggles completely cover over your eyes, placing you in a world that is not your own. This is quite a dream of Gardner's and truly something remarkable, allowing students more opportunities in their studies and in their futures. Gardner says that they are the ones she thought about through this whole journey. And my driver, my students, and they're the ones that I've had in the past who I have seen go on and do phenomenal things. And when I say phenomenal things, I don't mean necessarily monetarily. Or, I mean, they become incredible people, right? And that, that was my drive. For Lariat TV News, I'm Grace Smith. Coming up, we have a story on the upcoming Baylor fashion show you might not know about. We also have details on the new Baylor United uniforms. All this right after the break. The best and brightest are drawn to Baylor, where those from many backgrounds with many talents shine together before casting their light outward to illuminate the world. Through transformational learning opportunities that are grounded in Christian faith and service, and research that impacts lives and communities. Baylor University, a place where lights shine bright. Every year, student designers have the chance to showcase a clothing line they have put together all on their own in the Baylor Fashion Show. LTV and Sarah Gill sat down with a few of those designers who are preparing for the upcoming show on April 27th. The Baylor Fashion Show features senior collections with five to seven looks each. Every look has been completely designed and financed by a senior apparel design student. While you may just see an outfit walk across the stage, keep in mind there is always a story behind the design. Fashion applies to everyone. Everyone can find something that they would love in that show. There are 12 seniors this year, so there are a bunch of different aesthetics. There's definitely some avant-garde ones, but there's also bridal, there's streetwear, there's ready-to-wear, there's workwear, athleisure, everything in between. So there's something for everyone. Apparel design students have been working endlessly in the studio to create looks for the fashion show. Some collections have a more general theme, while others have been inspired by experiences from around the world. My collection was inspired by a mission trip I took um, to Sierra Leone, Africa in January. And when we were there, we were working with a safe house um, of girls like 14 or younger. Um, a lot of them dealt with human trafficking and they've been rescued from pretty terrible situations. And so my collection is supposed to be kind of a parallel of that. The first garment will appear kind of more restricted and there will be elements of chains. Then as each garment walks, they kind of lessen and it's kind of symbolizing the chains breaking. So my collection is kind of an abstracted, modern take on traditional Korean clothing. 
and I was just looking through some inspiration pictures and I saw a hat that had a really unique shape and I took that and I ran with it. Unlike other majors, apparel design isn't showcased every day. The Baylor Fashion Show is their time to shine and get their well-deserved 15 seconds of fame. Most people don't get to see us working up here. It's kind of the 12 of us that see the day in and day out of it rather than the whole world. To see their inspiration brought to life, don't miss the Baylor Fashion Show on April 27th. For Lariat TV News, I'm Sarah Gill. Whether it be through resume building, job searching, or finding information about career events on campus, career and professional development's platform Handshake connects students with career information or potential employers. Handshake is a free resource offered to all Baylor students who automatically have an account upon entering the university as a freshman. Some useful features about Handshake include the ability to add experience and a resume to a personal profile. Recruiters can see profiles and make appointments on campus to meet with students. Helpful services from Handshake include career advisements, mock interviews, resume building, a career closet, and much more. Sundown sessions at the Sub are university-sponsored events every Friday and Saturday night from 9 p.m. to 1 a.m. From movie nights to blacklight bowling, live concerts, and free food, the Baylor Student Union Board hosts activities for all Baylor students. LTVN's Mackenzie Oviet joined in on the fun and even met some new friends. Sundown sessions in the Sub are university-sponsored events every Friday and Saturday evening during the school year. Um, we've come here a couple times over the years, a couple times each semester. We saw a movie earlier and um, it's just a great place to hang out with friends. You get free bowling, we had a good friendly competition and we won of course. So um, it's a good fun place to go on the weekends. Sundown sessions are free and open to all students. Um, I got to meet a lot of new students and like you notice people on campus, you're like, wait, I know you, I've seen you somewhere before and you start talking. So it's a pretty social life, so it's pretty nice. We love coming down here to the sub on Saturdays and get some free bowling in and uh, get a little friendly competition between us and the friends, maybe play some foosball on the side. It's a lot of fun. Uh, there was one time where it got to the point where I knew people's shoe sizes like without like them telling me so it's kind of awkward at one point but, but yeah a couple people do come again and again. And for Lariat TV News, I'm Mackenzie Oviet. Senior recitals are highly anticipated each year for upcoming graduates in the Baylor School of Music. All of the hard work, time and dedication is displayed in a performance that will wrap up their Baylor music experience. First, the hearing must be passed in which every student performs for those higher up in the School of Music. Once approved, the songs are selected and the hours and hours of practicing begin. Despite the nerves and preparation challenges, the outcome is always rewarding for every senior who showcases their talent on stage. One school in one streamlined color scheme. Baylor Athletics is now totally unified with the same colors and styles across all sports. LTVN's Noah Tour was at the brand reveal and spoke to one of the driving forces behind this change. As High School Musical once said, we're all in this together. Baylor Athletics unveiled their new unified collection of uniforms over the weekend and the reveal was open to the public. All of the sports on Baylor's campus now share the same color schemes and styles so you'll have to wave goodbye to those neon basketball jerseys. Assistant Athletic Director for Equipment Services Jeff Barlow said that despite some big changes in colors for a few sports, all of the coaches jumped on board. We're trying to be one institution, one brand, all color palette the same. So I think, you know, kudos to the coaches for really being on board with this. Walking through and seeing the uniforms, there was no sight of Sailor Bear, but despite the release of the new Bear logo, Sailor Bear hasn't been completely killed off, according to Barlow. Sailor Bear still lives a little bit within. Head football coach Matt Rule said his opinion doesn't matter as long as the players like it. If the players like it, and, and if, you know, I know I talked to a couple of recruits, if they like it, then obviously that's great. Barlow said the coaches even have the freedom to swap out the uniforms to create a variety of different combinations. You can check out these slick new uniforms this fall when volleyball and football kick off their season. For LTVN Sports, I'm Noah Tor. Baylor football is back, but not quite. Stick around and Noah will tell you all about the green and gold game, plus an update on Kim Mulkey's sweet new wheels.
Baylor football's annual green and gold game had a little deja vu this year as it was played again under rainy conditions, but this time they had the luxury of being inside. I was there and got a sneak peek at what fans are hoping are the 2019 Big 12 champs. Rain or shine, the show must go on for the Baylor Bears. Our big thing was we're not can we don't cancel things, we don't move things. Despite a dreary day in Waco, Coach Rule and his team played their final scrimmage of the spring inside the Allison Indoor Practice Facility. Charlie Brewer opened the scrimmage for Baylor, and then Rule mainly alternated between redshirt freshman Gary Bohannon and true freshman Jacob Zeno. Rule said he liked the way his QBs competed in the simulated game-like pressure. I feel really good about the mindset and the you know where that position's laying out. The main focus for the team was treating this scrimmage like an actual game, and according to Rule, he wants to keep upping the standard of Baylor football. Is a standard for last year going to be good enough? No, it can't be good enough. You know, you always have to improve what you're doing. The Bears season kicks off on August 31st against Stephen F. Austin at McLean Stadium. For LTVN Sports, I'm Noah Tor. If you're wondering why you saw Lady Bears head coach Kim Mulkey in that brand new Corvette all over social media this week, it was all thanks to the Allen Samuels auto dealerships. The COO of the Allen, Dan Allen Samuels group, Bill Denton, said that when Mulkey and the Lady Bears won their national championship in 2012, the dealerships gave Mulkey a Corvette to drive for a year. And while that one was red and this one is yellow, they still decided to continue that tradition and give Coach Mulkey that bright yellow Corvette for the coming year. Sticker price on that car is a cool $94,000. So we've done this uh, beautiful brand new Z06 Corvette, uh, which is in uh, close to Baylor, Baylor yellow as we could get it. And uh, she's going to drive that for this year. And then when they win the national championship again, back to back next year, we'll just get her another one. And we'll just keep doing it year after year. After taking the series two to one over the Oklahoma Sooners this past weekend, Baylor's baseball team is now ranked 18th in the country. They also lead the Big 12. In the rubber game against the Oklahoma Sooners on Sunday, Baylor walked it off for the fifth time this season on a two-out hit from senior second baseman Josh Bissonette at the bottom of the 12th for yet another series win. On Tuesday, the Bears hosted Sam Houston State, and it was a battle right from the start. In the first inning, both teams earned one run, and after that, Baylor scored more than eight runs by the bottom of the sixth inning to walk away with another home win, 9-6. Next up, the Bears will hit the road to Lubbock to face the Texas Tech Red Raiders in a three-game series Thursday through Saturday. And after Baylor softball was swept by Texas Tech, they came back and beat Lamar in a midweek doubleheader. Baylor cleaned house, winning the opener six-zip, and the second game was no different, with Baylor shutting out Lamar again, winning two to nothing. First baseman Goose McGlon is tied for fifth in the Big 12 with 22 walks this year, and in four games this season, she's walked three times. Nikki Dawson is still on fire this season, reaching the base safely in 32 straight games. And she is fourth in program history behind Caitlin Thuman, Lindsey Cargill, and Shelby Frudenberg. The Bears are playing Iowa State at Getterman Stadium on Thursday to solidify their spot in the Big 12 tournament. The Baylor Equestrian team opened up their 2019 NCEA championship run on Wednesday morning. Hosted by the Extra Co Event Center here in Waco, the team is taking part in their 13th straight national championship. This four-day tournament includes a team bracket as well as four event-specific brackets with fences, flat, horsemanship, and reining. Baylor begins by facing number six Oklahoma State and will lead with fences. Horsemanship will follow where Baylor will face South Dakota State. The championship will run until Saturday when mission is free to the public. And that's all I've got for sports today. Thank you for watching Larry TV News today. We'll see you next week. Have a great day, Baylor Nation.